Welcome back. It is. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. It Welcome back, swoop, everyone. It is favorite swoop, sport, your favorite sports talk show where we talk show where we give you an inside look at your favorite BG sports, your favorite BG athletes, sports, and we take athletes, it nationwide. And we take it nationwide. I am your host, Autumn Stevens. I am your host, Autumn Stevens. We are here, Stevens. We are here with Zach the one that gets really upset, about, that gets the really upset about, about the Browns. Once we'll find out if he is today. We'll find out if he is today. We'll find out. We've got Cameron Flynn. We've got Cameron Flynn. Die hard, die hard, fast facts. He'll give you fast facts. And then Ryan Strode. And then Ryan Strode. Back up, of course. Can't prove it. Can't prove it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just like to argue every point I bring up. So point. I think it's important we start with some hot topics. BG basketball, they both were away this weekend. Um, starting with the guys, Dylan Fry had a smaller game this week, but with the loss to the ACU Wildcats, 88-83, to 83, who else show, like, was a star for this? Because Dylan Fry had 14 points, he was the second highest scorer, but... Um, Roger Caldwell came out with 25, so it was interesting to see him play this weekend. Well, it is nice to see um, Roger Caldwell uh, pick up the slack for Dylan Fry. Even though Dylan Fry by no means had a bad game, uh, he, he usually is the leading scorer for this team. Um, so to see uh, somebody like Roger Caldwell come in and, and lead the scoring, it's, it's, it's nice to see and see that we have a balanced team, not dependent on a couple of players. That's what you're going to see with a young team as well, that you're going to see some guys shine some nights and sometimes take a back seat to the scoring. Um, that you've seen Justin Turner explode for a big game, Dylan Fry, uh, and now Roderick Caldwell. So, um, you know, later on in the year, maybe they're all going to have a big game um, in the same game, and, you know, that can just lead to more success in the future. Um, and I like where the team's going, even after a loss. Yeah, I like where those students are going. Five and two right now, uh, top in the MAC in scoring offense. Defense second lowest, though. Got to work on that a little bit. But also top 50 in the nation in three-point field goal percentage, which is huge. The three-point shooting has been phenomenal. Dylan Fry leading the MAC in three-point field goal percentage. Uh, but Roger Caldwell, you mentioned it. He had a great week, named uh, MAC Player of the Week, I think, for uh, the Mid American Conference, which is good. So. I'm excited about this men's basketball team. I think we mentioned that last week, how excited we are about these two teams that are on our campus playing basketball. And I'm excited to see what they have in store for the rest of the season. And it's true. We did talk about this last week. They are a young team, but we're excited. So other guys that we can mention too, like DiMaggio Wiggins, phenomenal. Uh, it, their names pop up constantly throughout the game. So it's awesome to see that. On the women's side, we had a win for them. Um, the Florida Atlantic Owls um, at the FAU Fall Tournament, they had a win. Um, Carly with 16 points. Yeah, uh, that is an amazing form. So, uh, we usually talk about, um, what, what's her name, Lambert? What's, what's Sydney Lambert. Lambert, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's who we're usually talking about with the basketball team. And it's kind of been like that for ever since she's been here. She's been the only one anybody's been talking about because she's been leading the team. But this year it's a little bit different. We got uh, girls contributing all over the place. Yeah, more balanced scoring attack this year, not relying on one, uh, one woman to seal the deal. Um, in the same way on the men's and women's side. The, uh, not relying on one uh, player to score the basket uh, leads to more consistent play, and we've seen that throughout the beginning of the season. Yeah, Carly Santoro, MVP of the FAU tournament. Uh, she's averaging a double-double currently. Uh, she had 16 points and 14 rebounds. Uh, the other, I think in the final game, uh, she had 16 points and 17 rebounds in another game this uh, past weekend. But in five of her six games this year, she's had a double-double. So she has been a force to be stopped scoring, and she has been a force trying to rebound the, the, the ball. This is the best start from women's basketball since 2010-2011. So it's nice to see after a couple of years where they did struggle, it's nice to see them start off strong here uh, this season. It's, it's awesome. And we want to remind you, too, these basketball teams are fantastic. So if you want to join in on the conversation, make sure you tweet us on Twitter and you use the hashtag swoopin. It's it's going to be a good conversation coming up, so you're definitely going to want to join in on that, too. So I, we know, I know we have a few questions coming up, but I, now we have to get into hockey. Saw Miami this weekend, had one win, one loss, and one tie. What do you think about it, Zach? Uh, not the result you want against Miami. Uh, we're a better hockey team than Miami. We've proven that over the years. Uh, and this hasn't been quite the year BG Hockey was hoping for. Uh, and last year was very similar with the slow start. Uh, so hopefully they can get something going as they continue conference play. Uh, but losing to Miami, really disappointing. Yeah, another young team in the BG hockey team. Um, and like you said, hopefully, like last season, they can pick it up in your tournament time. Um, but yeah, not the result you want against Miami. Um, that I, I agree, we're a better team than Miami. But you know, they ended up, did get, they ended up getting the win um, in the second half of the, the doubleheader. Um, 
But yeah, hopefully they can pick it up near the end of the season and start getting the wins rolling. Yeah, it was really surprising seeing this team come out and struggle against this Miami team. I didn't think Miami was anything spectacular coming into the weekend, but they definitely showed on Friday that they were a force to be reckoned with. And Miami, they, they weren't good coming in, but I think Bowling Green maybe had a little too much turkey on Thanksgiving, and on Friday it showed. But it's going to be a tough matchup this weekend. They take on Bemidji State, uh, another good team in the WCHA. I'm, I'm interested in what the Falcons do this week, and I really think this could be a huge weekend for them, either go up in the polls or go way down uh, against this tough Beavers team. Perfect. Well, all right, I'm actually going to throw it right back to you because right. we talked about this earlier. <laughs> Loves talking VG Volleyball. Um, he Love knows it. it best. So although they didn't get the final score that they wanted in the MAC tournament, um, they are not done. They're not done. So. What can we expect? They're not done. They're going to play in the NIVC, the National Invitational Volleyball Championship. Uh, they got their seating on Sunday. Uh, they'll be at Green Bay. Uh, they'll play the host team, Green Bay, in Green Bay. So that's a lot of Green Bays right there for you. <laughs> but uh, if they win that, they'll go on to face the IUPUI or Illinois State. And interesting to note, um, if they face Illinois State, that'll be the top two diggers in the nation. And Kelly Simon and Courtney Pence, which will be an interesting matchup. But Green Bay on Thursday, they're 15-15. and 15. They lost to Cleveland State in the Horizon League Championship. So they're no slouch of a team, but I expect Bowling Green to come out with a lot of firepower, come out against, the, I think, a weaker Green Bay team, win that one, go on face. I would imagine Illinois State would get the victory over uh, Uwe Pewey, as I like to call him. But, uh, so I, it's interesting to see. I, I think this Falcon team is very good. How far they go is going to be dependent on how well they rely on their young talent, which... Uh, they only have one senior in Nicole Slimko. It's nice to see her season keep alive. And Callie Simon has been dominant for BG Volleyball as well. So uh, I'm interested to see how far they do go in this tournament. I think they can make quite a run. Anything else, guys? You pretty uh, much I, covered I, it. I mean, yeah. He's the expert. <laughs> yeah, I know. He said everything I know and more. Maybe we so. should start with that, let him run with it, and then yeah. later we'll take over. But <laughs> Yeah, no, they're a young team. Um, and, you know, coming off the disappointing performance in the MAC. Um, hopefully they can use that as motivation to come out and win a big tournament uh, coming up. So, All right, BG Sports, good and bad. We saw players outshine. We saw athletes come out of what we were waiting for, the woodworks maybe. Um, but going to a big topic, I know Ryan and I were kind of discussing it earlier. Was it smart for Tennessee to back out of the, the Greg Schiano deal? What do you think? I know you're fired up. I know you have I, opinions. I got my opinion on it. Uh, Ryan, please go. I, yeah, I, I'm good to go again. Yeah, well, you yeah. guys make yeah, me yeah, talk, I guess. <laughs> uh, anyways, but uh, Greg Schiano, it's a big mistake by uh, Tennessee. I mean, he's a pro proven program builder. He built Rutgers out of nothing, pretty much ash. He built that team into a winning program. Went to Tampa Bay. Didn't struggle in the NFL a little bit. But he came back, and now he worked his way up back through Ohio State. Tennessee deciding not to go with Greg Schiano after – uh, an outrage from fans, which is ridiculous, and they're claiming it's because of Penn State because Shiano was there at Penn State when all that stuff was going on with Jerry Sandusky and stuff like that. But I, I, I think it's a big mistake by Tennessee. I, I think now they burnt a hole into their coaching search, and they're going to have to find someone with Tennessee ties to fill that head coaching vacancy. Yeah, absolutely. I think they made a huge mistake here. Um, they're struggling to find a head coach right now. To turn a guy like Shiano down like that, that's – it may come back to bite them very, very soon. Yeah, big mistake for Tennessee. I agree with both of you. Um, Shiano, the silver bullets of the Buckeyes that he's played or he's coached um, amazingly since uh, coming to Ohio State, and the outrage is just unjust from the Tennessee fans. Um, and even the White House press secretary uh, blasted him on Facebook, which is un unfair to say the least. Um, <laughs> But Tennessee, uh, I'd be shocked if they get a coach uh, with a bigger name and a bigger resume, better oh, wow. resume than Shiano. Um, and I don't see that team competing for SEC championships or national championship for a uh, long time in the future. Yeah, it's going to be a long time. It's crazy to say that fans can affect the game that much. It, you know, like you said earlier, they were crying over it. So <laughs> I also think it's a somewhat to deal with their their take on they think they can get John Gruden. John Gruden has shown no in <laughs> implications to come back into college football or, or coach football alone, and they think that they're going to get him. It, it's quite ridiculous, and this is that's somewhat what was fueling their outrage as well. Yeah, John Gruden's playing really a smart game um, in his career. That you know, every couple of years, every year in the NFL, it seems like. Uh, teams that fire their head coach, they say John Gruden's gone their bubble on their list, and John Gruden puts his name out there, 
And what does ESPN do? They give him a new, <laughs> bigger, fatter contract. So props to you, John Gruden. Keep using that leverage. Um, but yeah, there's no way he's going to Tennessee. Um, too much pressure at Tennessee now that even if he did go there, uh, that team's not winning anything for a couple years. So uh, good for John Gruden and uh, poor on the f uh, fan base of Tennessee. <laughs> So, speaking of angry coaches, I have to bring it up. All right, this was the game, the game we all waited for. Okay, I waited for, I was hopeful. <laughs> the first half was fantastic. Michigan, Ohio State. So, something had happened. Apparently, there's an investigation now. Um, Urban Meyer says there's an investigation on the incident with JT Barrett. He was warming up. Media was on the sidelines. Urban said it himself. There was a ton of people on the sidelines. And JT Barrett was hurt. He already had a bad knee, but we all know that if you're an athlete, a bum knee can be hurt anyway. A broken floorboard, a rock on the ground, your knee could just, it's, you're done. So do you think it's the fact that they had too many people on the sidelines come back, so whether that be alumni, letter wearers, anything like that, or do you think it's the media's fault for getting, and I know JT Barrett is huge in the media. He's Ohio State, you, you know the name, but do you think it's the media's fault? I'm not a big JT Barrett fan to begin with, but I felt really bad for him and the Ohio State coaching staff um, after I found out what had happened uh, with the cameraman on the sideline that Urban Meyer said that he, uh, he turned around and saw JT Barrett on the ground writhing in pain um, during warm-ups when the cameraman um, supposedly hit him in the back of the knee and knocked him down. That uh, I'm not sure how much they're going to get in the investigation and what's going to come out of it, um, but it's, it's disappointing. Um, for the fan base and it's disappointing for the staff to prepare um, the whole year for this game only to have your quarterback hurt at the worst time. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> this is... This Zach, is, was it you? I, I don't know if I, you were I, at the game. I look, I look. could have been on the sideline. This has got to be one of the weirdest <laughs> stories that I've heard all year. I mean, a camera... Like, it was almost too hard to believe, almost. Can you, I thought can it was you imagine what would have happened if they would have lost the game and oh, that would have come up? That, 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 that cameraman. That, that would have been a scapegoat. You'd have to hide. Yeah. Well, well I'm, I'd I'm quit. sure he's still I'd hiding. <laughs> you have to move yeah, to yeah. a new country That's why they can't name. find him yet. New family. <laughs> and speak, speaking of winning, Jim Harbaugh, 1-5 in five against his rivals. I think he is... He doesn't have a win <laughs> as an underdog. He's 1-6 in six against the top 10. Um, no wins on the road, top 10. When is it time to, you know, put him on the hot seat? I think he's already on the hot seat. They're giving him a lifetime contract. What do you mean? I look. I think I think I think he's not even up. I think he's recruits are He built that he's program been there for nothing. 3 years. I he's give up. Oh, no. Okay. No, I it's your, the honeymoon phase is over. It's, it's they it have matter. they have one more year. And next year, the schedule is even tougher. They have to go to Notre Dame. He puts his shoulders to, up like he's ready to, to go fight this again. To Notre Dame, they have to go to Ohio State, and I believe they have to go to Michigan State as well. Um, and Michigan State is not in a rebuilding phase anymore. They're reloading off of this great season. Um, so those are three possible games that they could lose next year that are in tougher spots than this year. And that opening game versus Notre Dame next year on the road, who are you going to start? Are you going to start Peters? Are you going to start a true freshman, a redshirt freshman? Uh, Jim Harbaugh hasn't found a quarterback, and it's going to be four years. Um, and Ohio State has Dwayne Haskins. They're in trouble. Or Michigan State has Lewerke. Yeah. <laughs> that I think Ohio State's depth chart at quarterback, it's scary if you're a Michigan fan the next couple of years. That I think it's time that they can't get rid of him, but if I was a Michigan fan, I'd be very underwhelmed by the first three years of Jim Harbaugh. I, I, you were, were going to say something? No, I, I got nothing. I mean, I, going back to JT Barry, that's unfortunate. I mean, I, I don't think they're going to make the college football playoff as it is anyways, but... It's unfortunate to hear that kind of news. But. It's it like I I have talked over and over with people in the industry. We've talked about it at work. The media has a hard time enough. Like it, if you're on the sidelines, you are falling cables. You are running in and out of people, which it sucks. Yeah, but you got to do what you got to do. So going off that, we actually so going have off that, we actually have in. some tweets. Oh, wow. So I know we had our oh, wow. first. I know we had our Ohio first one. State, Speaking of Ohio, um, State. does Ohio State have a chance to make the college playoff? You said no. I said no. They needed Alabama to win that Auburn, that Iron Bowl uh, this weekend, and Auburn upsetting Alabama there. That just really hurt Ohio State's chances because if Auburn would have lost, that would have bumped them behind Ohio State. Ohio State would have had a chance to get in then. So I, I really don't see a scenario where Ohio State could get in, even if they do beat Wisconsin, who is undefeated right now. 
I think it's very, very improbable, more improbable than it was last week um, before Alabama ended up losing. Um, they're going to need a lot more chaos to happen. Uh, obviously, they have to take care of business against Wisconsin, which I think they're capable of. Um, but they have to hope for TCU to upset um, Oklahoma, which would give both teams two losses, and hope the committee um, puts them ahead of TCU with two losses and a conference champion, and Alabama with only one loss. But there's just too much that has to happen. I don't see it this uh, year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot needs to happen with this team, and I think the big thing that needs to happen for them is they need to beat Wisconsin convincingly. They can't just sneak by. They can't have a close game. They need to do what they did the year they won the national championship in 2015 with their backup quarterback, Cardell Jones, and absolutely Third blow string. out. Third string. Oh, third string. That's third, right. Yeah. Third string at that point. I always forget that. that point. Speaking, yeah. Speaking of backup quarterbacks, in the limited time that we saw him, what do you think of Dwayne Haskins? I really he, like him. I like him. That, I, that throw I, I that he made it. on he third and 13 with the game, <laughs> not on the line, but definitely hanging in the balance, that yeah. was probably one of the – Probably the clutchest throw that Ohio State quarterback has made all season. Absolutely. It's, it's a great sign of things to come. And Michigan's always the biggest game of the year for that uh, freshman to come in like that. It was truly incredible. And I think he's a better passer than JT, I'll say that. Uh, although JT has the edge in the running game, of course. Um, I wouldn't be disappointed to see him start against Wisconsin. As, as bad as it was, um, and as bad as this is, I didn't feel, I felt obviously bad for JT Barrett going down with the injury. But I didn't feel uncomfortable with Haskins coming into Never. the game. I almost felt more comfortable with him leading the offense. Uh, that He made a couple great throws on the run to slants and crossing routes that JT Barrett seemingly hasn't made the past few weeks, um, ever since Iowa dismantled them. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm excited for things to come with Ohio State football, whether that be Martell or Haskins. Um, but it seems like they have a bunch of quarterbacks um, coming through the woodworks. Yep. <laughs> Famous line right there. You got anything over there, I Mr. Got nothing Silent? Else. You, you guys took it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfair. You I'll guys took it all. Quarterbacks win games. They win championships, and Michigan does not have one. So Teams win championships. Teams win championships, Teams win championships Zach. I'm going to say, <laughs> O'Corn took a hit. I don't know if you guys saw his interview on social media or anything. He was in tears. I feel bad for the kid. I do. I do. I, I do. And <laughs> despite I, – Ohio State played a great game. They are a second-half team. They came out after – trailing in the first half, coming out the second half with, what, third string you said, correct? Uh, he was second. Second. He was second. second. Sorry, my bad. My bad. But incredible job. But O'Corn just, it's jokes all around. And I've done it. I've blamed myself. I've said a few too. So maybe we'll figure it out. But going off of that, since Ohio State you don't think will make the playoffs, I agree with that. But who is your top four? So, Ryan, we'll start with you. Oh, top four. I got, I'm ready for this. Uh, so, top four is obviously going to be Clemson, Oklahoma. I'm putting Wisconsin at number three right now just because they're undefeated. Obviously, that all depends on uh, how they do against Ohio State. Wisconsin really hasn't played anybody this year, so it's going to be interesting how they play against one of their first real competition of the year. And then Auburn, number four, obviously, uh, after they beat Alabama. My first two out are going to be Alabama and Georgia. And the SEC game, I think, could decide if they get to uh, – players into the college football, actually. I think SEC has a good chance. I agree with the most, for the most part. Um, I think Auburn is the most complete team in college football. Um, now, after their two losses early in the season, no one can block their defensive line. That Between them and Ohio State, their defensive front seven is absolutely unstoppable. Um, and now that they have a, a manageable quarterback in Jarrett Stidham and some good running backs and good receivers, um, I got them at number one. Uh, I think Oklahoma huh. takes care of business. Um, in the Big 12 championship game. I have them at two. I think Clemson also takes care of business, beats Miami, who kind of got exposed last week, um, and they're at three. I think Ohio State gets it done versus Wisconsin. Um, that I agree, as Wisconsin hasn't played very many good teams, um, and I don't think they can handle both facets of offense and defense from Ohio State. Um, so I'm going to have to, as much as I hate to do it, I'm going to have to put Alabama at number four. That As much as they're injured, that... If Wisconsin wins, are they? If are Wisconsin they in? wins, they're in. Okay. There's, there's no way right. that they're. I, I, I got to clarify that. There's no way sure. they're going to set a precedent that they're going to leave an undefeated uh, Power Five conference school in. Say so you better say Power Five. The UCF's yeah. out there. They're, no. they're going to. Yeah, no, chopping UC at their biscuit and be ready sure. to UCF, take your head off. UCF will get killed by USC in the Fiesta Bowl or something like that. Oh wow! Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, strong. Hot take. Hot take. Hot take. Not really hot, but yeah. sizzling. Yeah, I mean, we have sizzling. UCF sizzle. really hasn't Luke played Warm. anybody either, yeah. so we don't know anything about that team. They played South Florida. Uh, that was a great game. No, that, that was, was an incredible. That was an incredible uh, game. Yeah. 
Sorry, um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> do my top four right You're now. You're allowed now. No, You're allowed. Yeah. sorry. My number one, uh, the Oklahoma Sooners. Wow. I don't think anybody in college football is playing better than them right now. They're absolutely dominating teams. Uh, I love to watch them play. Uh, so they are my number one. Number two, I'd say Clemson, solid number two. Uh, and then three and four, that's where things get a little confusing because I think uh, uh, there's about three more teams that can slide into those last two spots being Alabama, Auburn, and Wisconsin. Uh, and I don't know if Auburn can make it in. Uh, wow. If you were if watching the Alabama game. Well, if they win the SEC championship? championship? Well, the championship? Well, if they win the SEC championship, let them in. Okay. But I don't let them in. Thank, thank you. I, I don't, guess you just I don't think know. they will. You know, okay. I don't think they will. Um, okay. Their their best player, Carrion Jones, went down against Alabama. That's true. Uh, and we don't know his status yet. But if they're going into that championship game without him, I don't feel confident that Auburn can win that. Mm-hmm. That's why I would say they're questionable to make it into the playoff. What about Georgia? They're only not. I count. But if Auburn doesn't win the SEC championship, Georgia does. Does Georgia get Ge- the nod? I would say Georgia get. I don't trust. I don't. Jake I don't know who game. would come out. That freshman Jake from a quarterback. Alabama, I don't they're not the champion. They were crying. They, they, they have one loss. They have one sh- loss. They were crying last year that you need to win a championship. You're gonna let Alabama. You're without gonna without a championship. You're gonna kick to Alabama resident. out of the playoffs when Auburn has two losses. Yes, because they're a champion and they beat Alabama. They still have more losses. It doesn't matter. They beat Alabama the team lost at- one game all year. Yeah, because that was their first real competition of the year. I don't disagree with either point. So you have wait. to take a side. That's not fair. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I, no, I don't disagree with either point. Alabama hasn't played anybody all year, but then again, their only loss is to a top four Auburn team. Um, and That's I don't, supposedly playing the best football right now. I, yeah. No, I, I, I think they are. That they, they showed against Alabama and Nick Saban's defense that they can put up points and they can also stop uh, Alabama's rushing game with Bo Scarborough and uh, Jalen Hurts. So. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the SEC championship game. I think that game, um, that game decides who goes in the SEC, obviously, and the ACC championship game between Clemson and Miami also decides who goes between Miami and Clemson. And I don't think anybody's giving Miami a chance. Not that they deserve one, because they kind of got humiliated yeah. last week. But, you know, they've been a little inconsistent all year, barely beating teams. No, they did have a big win against Notre Dame, but, you know, we'll see. If they win, barely, do they get... So maybe Glenn's in there in for you? Personally, I think they do get in, but if they barely beat Clemson, I'd almost have to give the edge to Alabama just based on their strength of, not strength of victory, but how much they've dismantled teams. Not that they've yeah. played anybody, but neither has Miami. They haven't played anybody else. Yeah, but they there. dismantled bad teams. They, they, they closed, the games that they had close were, were, were games that were real competition. True. I'm going to stop you there before we have ah. someone jumping across the table. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm coming. We're going to switch gears. We haven't talked yet about NBA, so I think it's important we bring it up. Do the Cavs deserve D. Rose? Deserve or just... <laughs> I, I, do they deserve? Need it? They don't, is he coming don't back? Do anything I don't think anything at this point. I don't, I don't think, think LeBron. Does D. Rose is, is he coming back? Is he, gonna, is he going to leave? Or what do you think? What What's your take? I do not feel confident that Derrick Rose will return to the NBA. Okay. I think he's done. Right. These past couple years have been incredibly rough for him. And to think about where he was in 2011 when he was the MVP. Just what could have been? Him. What could have been? What and look been? at him now. And you look at the laundry list of injuries he's had in his career. I think mentally that toll that, that, toll that just builds up over time, that gets in your head, and all of a sudden you're that guy that gets hurt every single year, that messes with you mentally. And I think... He needs to take, at least take a break from basketball right now to get his head straight. And knowing that once Isaiah Thomas comes back, that he won't even be the starting point guard on this Cav- uh, Cavaliers team. You know, that's got to play on the mind as well. Um, what could have been? He was an exciting player to watch, to say the least, uh, back in Chicago. I'd like to reverse the question, does he deserve the Cavs? Does he deserve a free trip to the finals? All right, all right. I, that boy would, needs some milk, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second of all, he did this last year with the Knicks. If you all recall, he took a little hiatus yeah. from the Knicks and came back and well, decided to so give it a try. Can, you know, you know, at least he told us back. about his hiatus. Yeah, yeah he that's a good point. He didn't tell the Knicks. I mean, but do, would you tell the Knicks, honestly? No, I, I, I feel like I would have told the Knicks. Point for He's insane. Bringing back, you said you mentioned the MVP. We actually had a tweet come in from Garrett McKinney, and he asked, do you, sitting the Cavs, yeah, 
Do you think LeBron has a legitimate chance at MVP? Yes. Of okay. course. No. Of course. Oh, whoa. 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 Okay. He is, hey, yeah. right. No, no, no. Right. Right. Listen, listen. I'm listening. He, he, is, I'm not ready. Ready. he <laughs> is the best player in basketball. He has okay. been for every single year that he's played in the NBA. Sure. He yeah. has no chance at MVP because it's a common narrative. He does. The NBA will not crown him MVP just as they – he was better statistically than Russell Westbrook last year. He was better than Derrick Rose when he won it. The NBA just can't – it's the same thing as Michael Jordan. They can't crown him MVP every year. They can't crown LeBron James MVP every year or else it looks bad on their but part. They, they want new faces. He is the best player in the league, and I still don't even think it's close. KD's up there. Mm, Giannis is getting there. He still doesn't have a jump shot, but – LeBron is the best player in the league, year 15. I don't think he'll win MVP just based on the fact that his name's LeBron James. You know, you br- I, th- I think that's a good point. I, 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 I didn't see it from that perspective <laughs> yeah. before, but and I, I get your point. But the, the MVP goes to one of the better basketball players, and it, this conversation comes up in every sport. It's called the most valuable player, not the best player award. So the player that means the most to the team, and I, I think that's LeBron James. I, I honestly think right. LeBron and means more to the Cavs. I think than that's the LeBron every year, no matter what. I, I, right. Yes, exactly. I but the thing is, this year he's taken over this team. Uh, last year, he and the past couple of years, he's taken a, like not not a backseat. Obviously, he's still LeBron James, but he's had to share the ball with uh, Kyrie and Kevin Love. So he hasn't been in the spotlight as much as he's used to. This year, it's all him. It, it really, it's, it's, he's producing. It is incredible. He's having it's a Westbrook year because he had. has to have. A and Westbrook this is like year. year like 15 for him or something like that, which it, is crazy. His, his production in year 15, it, it's it's absolutely insane. That you compare Jordan's production in year 15. Different ages. I'm not gonna. Hey, yeah, there, guy, there's. He's 39. LeBron's 32. It, LeBron, he's averaging almost 40 minutes a game in year 15. It, it's unprecedented. Yeah, it is. Jordan got burnt out, um, and there's really no other player to compare him to. So if LeBron's not MVP, then who is? That, that's my point. I don't think there's many. Co- there's not that top competition the like MVP like Russell this year, year is going to go to the flashiest player. Kyrie. It's, no, Kyrie no. is Kyrie's trouble. not the flashiest player. Ky- I right think now? it's, it's going go well, to it's gonna go to the new story, either in Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's going to go to James Harden. You know, if he can lead his team to the Western Conference Finals, have a good year. It's going to be the same story as Russell Westbrook. That you know, his team gets bounced in the playoffs last year. I mean, I know playoff stats don't matter, but you know, you can't get away with shooting less than forty percent <laughs> from three for the rest of your life. And LeBron James is just getting better and better. So. He deserves to win MVP every year that he stays in the league until you see that decline, but it hasn't happened yet. So he's MVP every year. Sh- NBA just won't make Let's just it. give it to J.R. Smith and call it a deal. <laughs> Open shots are boring. <laughs> so last quick point. I want to get the last thoughts. We're okay. bringing it back to DG. you got two, two seconds for each person. James Morgan has announced that he is now released. He released a statement on Twitter. Where is he headed? Where is he transferring to? I don't even think he knows. <laughs> honestly, he so could go going to Michigan. Need a quarterback. Good luck. Wow. Good luck. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a far shot. Right there. Hell yeah. Um, I think this year definitely hurt him. Um, hey, if he wanted to transfer after last season, he could have gone to a, a great Division One school. Uh, after this year, who knows where he might be? Best going. of luck, but yeah, somewhere yeah, in the best MAC, of luck. somewhere. Well, it's, it's Interesting situation. He, so he's technically graduating this spring, so he's going to transfer as a graduate assistant or not graduate, graduate assistant, yeah. gra- graduate player. So that means he can go to any D1 school and play right away because he doesn't have to wait that waiting period. And he still has two years of eligibility. Now he was recruited out of Ball State, Southern Illinois, e- uh, Eastern Michigan, if I stand correct. He was recruited out of there. I, I'd see him going to a lower D1 school, somewhat similar to Bowling Green. I don't. I don't think James Morgan is a bad quarterback. I think the system hurt him a little bit, and I just never think he got his feet going this season, which really and didn't he, really have confidence. He said it himself. He's thankful for the opportunity, and he's ready to take his talent somewhere else and see if he can grow in his in his position at an other school. I wish him the Do best of luck. time for a couple Wait, few predictions or no? I don't think we have time this week, but stay week. tuned. Darn. Next, we are actually – this is our it for the semester. <gasps> we we <gasps> thank everyone for co- tuning in this week and last week if you uh, tuned into that. But this after winter break, we are coming in hot, so stay warm this winter break. Thank you for joining us. It is a swoop. I am your host, Autumn Stevens. We've got Zach Carrion, Cameron Flynn, and Ryan Strodbeck. Have a great blessed. night. Go Browns. Have a great night.